Okay, I hope you've got your custard creams or your bourbons or your pink wafers ready. We're going to read chapter one of The Legend of Kevin. Kevin blows away. One night, there was a terrible storm. It blew across the outermost sea where the mermaids lived. It drove huge white waves against the black rocks where gangs of cheeky sea monkeys made their homes. It howled over the wild wet hills. Kevin huddled down in his treetop nest and squeezed his eyes tight shut against the rain. The wind blew harder and harder. It lashed Kevin's oak tree to and fro until the nest fell out of its branches. And Kevin fell out of the nest. Kevin flapped his small wings as fast as they would flap, but the wind was too strong for him. It carried him high into the sky. It blew him far across the wild, wet hills. It blew him over roads and rivers, all the way to the places where ordinary people lived. People who didn't believe in flying ponies. He blew past electricity pylons and mobile phone masts and forests of chimneys until at last, with a loud doof, he bumped into the side of a tall building. Bother, said Kevin. Inside the tall building, there lived a short boy. The boy's name was Max, and he looked like this. Max lived in the flat on the top floor of the tall building with his mum and dad and sister. Max's dad was a builder. He was very good at it. Wherever Max went into the, in the little town of Bumbleford, there were roofs that his dad had fixed or porches that he had put up and even whole houses he had built. Max was proud of that. Max's mum was a hairdresser. She owned the hairdressing salon in the high street. She was always worrying about it because it didn't have many customers. Most people went to the big new hairdressers at the end of the high street. Mum was always trying to think of schemes to make her salon more popular, only none of them seemed to work. But Max knew she was the best hairdresser in Bumbleford. She always cut Max's hair, and it looked excellent, as you can see. Max's sister was called Daisy. She was a bit older than Max, and she made everybody call her Elvira because she was going through a phase. What are you looking at? Max was a quiet and thoughtful boy. He liked drawing, reading and swimming. But most of all, he liked animals. What he wanted more than anything else in the whole world was a pet. He would have liked to share the top floor flat with a cat. Better still, he would have liked a dog. But Max's mum was too busy with her hair salon and Max's dad was too busy building things. Neither of them had time to look after a dog. I could look after it myself, Max said. I'd get up early and feed it and take it for a walk before I went to school and then it could just sleep till I came home in the afternoon. He showed them a chart he had made of the best dogs. Mum and Dad didn't think it would be fair to keep a dog in the top of floor flat. Max tried getting his sister Daisy to have a word with them. She was older than Max so he thought she might be able to persuade them. But Daisy only liked scary animals. We should get a wolf or a vampire bat, she said. Or a giant bird-eating spider. We are not getting a giant bird-eating spider, Daisy, said Dad. He was scared of creepy crawlies. My name is not Daisy, said Daisy. I am Elvira. And she went back into her bedroom, slammed the door and listened to gloomy music very loudly. So Max had to be content with cuddly animals instead. He had quite a large collection of those and he was very fond of all of them. But it wasn't the same as having a real live pet. That night, as he lay in bed listening to the wild wind howl and who around the tall building, Max felt very sad. I so wish I had a pet, he thought. It doesn't have, even have to be a dog or a cat. Almost any sort of pet would do. And then from somewhere just outside his bedroom window, there came a loud doof and a quiet bother. <laughs>